Have you guys noticed what's happened to the mentality of humanity as a whole regarding this country? Let me ask you a question first. How many of you believe that America is going to be restored again? How many believe that? That America will be restored? How many? Anybody? Anybody believe that somehow we're going to work all this out? Anybody? Nobody? Anybody? Anybody? A lot of people say no, 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 no. Well, why not? So what would be the phrase? You know the phrase everybody uses? Let's, um, let's, let's take America back, right? That's what they say. Let's get America back again. What's wrong with that phrase? It's a disassociated phrase. Let me give you guys a hint. So that you can notice what has happened. Some very dark spirits have gotten a hold of quite a few, and they don't even know it. Even some of us. So let me share with you what has happened. How many of you have ever had anybody in your home? Don't answer this. Don't give me an answer in the chat room, okay? Just keep this to yourself. I want you guys to think about it. How many of you have had somebody in the household, or you have been in somebody's household, to find they really don't want you there? And their argument is, you're messing up the house too much. You're just ruining the house. You're, you're messing up the... Um, you know, the atmosphere of the house, whatever the case is. But it's almost like they're trying to save the house from you, correct? Isn't that right? Wouldn't some of you say that's right? You get that sentiment. You don't have to answer, but a lot of people say, right? They'll say, you know, I, I, this person can't be in my home. They're tearing my house up. And then a lot of you have been in the homes of people where you, you feel that sentiment that they want you out because their house is more important than you are. You don't have to answer out loud. This sentiment is wrong. It's wrong. It's incorrect. It's dark. It's devilish. It's what it is. The same thing has happened to this country. I, I've heard too much how people want other people out of the country because they're messing it up. We're not here to save the soil. The country would not be a country without the people. We have built up a nation full of nice things, and people are trying to save the nice things by getting rid of the people. That's, that's the same attitude global elitists have, isn't it? They want the people gone so they can enjoy the nice stuff. Get rid of the engine parts. Get rid of the laborers now that we have it built. Wrong sentiment. Why is everybody using that sentiment? So when I hear phrases like, let's get America back again, no. Let's educate the people. And when you have representatives in the White House, I'm sorry, but this is just how it is. When you have individuals up there and they talk negative against Israel, and they're representing this country because they're, they have constituents. Well, I'll tell you something. Take all them and their constituents. Put them on a boat and put them back over to the place where they came from. Because if, you, if you're sitting up there in Washington, but you're saying that America and Israel is trash, why are you here in the first place? You don't represent the best interest of this nation. Yeah, that means I have a problem with quite a few things, but in a very different way. See, I believe in the people, not the soil. I'm not going to protect a house from a person. I'm not doing that. When people first came to this nation, indeed, the flag kind of looks like it to me. You guys know all the stripes on the flag. You know what they mean to me? There are many different paths going in the same direction, aren't they? But they're different paths, aren't they? To me, that represents everybody's different way they get to the same point. See, in America, we have people with different perspectives, don't we? They believe differently. They're getting to the same point. Sometimes we argue for months. 
because that's how people are. But we suffer one another out of what, though? Love. See, it was love that bound us in the first place. But where love is not, you're going to start getting rid of the people. The same thing happened in Germany is going to happen here, too. America is going to be rebuilt. Oh, yes, it will. But it's not going to be rebuilt according to what people want it to be rebuilt to, because it's not going to be rebuilt with a bunch of oh, the anger, hatred, all these divisions and everything else. The house must fall first. Why? Because God's word is true. The word says a house divided against itself shall not stand, and it shall not stand because a curse is over that house. Even the founding, the, the, the people who founded this country, they already stated that they must always have unity. They have different ideologies. That's why they have debates. But they must always have unity, and it must always be about the people. The day they forget that is the day we crumble, and we're about to crumble. Because now we're trying to protect the soil from people. We have no care in us. We're worried about the bottom line, money. I think they've proven to us that money means nothing. How much money did they give away? We didn't go through any economic crash, and we're not going to. They're just simply going to switch how people buy and sell. People are going to have their money. They're not going to have product because we have enemy nations now. I hate to say it, but even that stinks. It smells funny. Because they talk too much on the telephone. They're too buddy-buddy. You're not going to tell me the president of one nation does not know what the president of another nation is doing. Why do they know so much about each other? But those things are never conveyed. When you sit behind closed curtains, you begin to learn the truth. They present something to the people, and the people are always in turmoil. Because they always have an agenda, and it's not the people. It is to protect those who mean something to them. Do you know that? We're not talking about some sort of cabal either. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about humanity. How people have become. They'll throw you out on the street to protect a poodle. I'm telling you the truth. They will not feed you, but they will feed a stray cat. I'm telling you the truth. Many don't like humanity, but they love animals. They hate their brother, but they love the cats and the dogs and the wolves and the bears. Are we that backwards and upside down? Are we that devoid of love? You know what the Bible says? The love of many is going to wax colder and colder. Iniquity will abound because the love of many is going to wax colder and colder. Iniquity will abound. Hmm? In Isaiah, we saw that the earth was under a curse because of iniquity. Because people house in iniquity cannot exist without us. Whatever we agree to operate by is what exists in the earth. Satan would have no power if everybody said no. These things... We're going to have to fight, I mean, with every ounce of faith that we have, with faith, with our belief in Christ. We're going to have to stand up and fight, put an effort forward. Not waiting for somebody else to stand up first, but to be the first one to stand up and say, Lord, what must I do today? We know what the mandate is. Do all things with charity. You know what that is? Let's do all things, lending, hoping for nothing in return. Do all things, giving it away, not usury. Usury is when you do, you do a favor. You know you're going to get something back. Don't operate in those ways. You're, you're, you're so mature now. You're, you're so much older now. You're ripe now. When the Lord makes his move... Many are going to be wiped out. Humanity will be, um, he's going to depopulate the earth. 
That's what the Lord God Almighty said. He, he is going to bring down the population in the earth. Mankind does not have to do it because the Lord our God will. He said there will be few left on the earth. And so he has the master plan. We are to do all things without murmurings and disputings. That is to respect the choices of another. How simple is that? Somebody asked me something dealing with relationships. And they said, well, people ought to fight to keep this and to keep that. I said, why? You don't have to fight to keep anything that's yours. When was the last time you fought to keep your arm? When was the last time you fought to keep your leg? When was the last time you fought to keep your eye? You didn't. It's yours. It's attached to you. You don't have to fight to keep it. You just simply care for it. When something belongs to you, you don't have to fight for it. But if something does not belong to you, you can fight all day long. The moment you go to sleep, it's gone. How many know that's true about relationships and everything else? So many people have fought to keep what was not theirs. But then when something that truly belongs to them comes along, they reject it. And then they find themselves they can't get rid of it. Isn't that funny? It's supposed to be funny. We are to do nothing through strife or vainglory. Do nothing to pay anybody back. Do nothing to prove anybody wrong. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Philippians 2.2. 2. Isn't that awesome? Let nothing be done in strife or vainglory. That means I'm not going to do anything that will draw attention just to me for the sake of drawing attention just to me. I will do nothing as though I'm appointed above you. But with lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other. Lift your brother or your sister up in the ways of righteousness. Yet, even that's ignored. And when we go on doing this, we cultivate an environment of iniquity. And now we have manifestation issues everywhere. I mean, everywhere. It, it is so bold, brazen, and in your face these days. I can only imagine what the future holds. I don't want to be in the future. But if this the Lord's will that I be here, then so be it. Because if the Lord said, do you want to, you can come home right now if you so desire. The only thing that would keep me here is you. But if you ever said, don't we have enough? I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm gone. And I'll go with a smile on my face. I really will. But if I have to stay, I still have a smile on my face. I know who the adversary is. Let's establish one thing. The adversary is not your brother or your sister. The adversary is that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That's who your adversary is. And your adversary often works through people. We're not supposed to fall for that. Nor do we cultivate any type of environment that Satan can thrive in, in your brother or your sister. Have an understanding that many are being given over to a reprobate mind because they keep saying no to the father. They keep saying no and they're given over. I tell you, last night was an eye-opener. Everybody is not going to be able to make it through that gate, that straight gate, will they? They're not going to be able to. They just won't. But they will be given over to a reprobate mind to think those things that they persist in doing are okay. Listen to me carefully. If you're engaged in something that's not okay, but you don't even think about it now, you need to consider that. That means your conscience is being seared. We have enough of that in this country. Watch the violence. Folks, do you even, do you know about the violence that is about to erupt? Can you discern the violence that will erupt in a day or two? Not a week, in a day or two. I'll kick myself off the stage if my speech becomes uh, too inaccurate. 
We're talking about some real violence. And the earth is going to respond in kind, as it always does. As men begin to uh, find themselves in an uproar, so will the earth. But we begin by not falling for the propaganda. Not falling for what's popular. And realizing God has equipped us with everything we need to know within the body of Christ. Everything we need to know is within the body of Christ. But we'll never know that if we keep looking externally for sources of trust. That's exactly what we do too many times. That's why I don't like academia in certain levels being used in settings like this. For what reason? To bring that competitive nonsense into, the, into a place where we celebrate the Lord? Lift up his name? No. And we do these things in wisdom. The wisdom God has qualified you with, you have wisdom within you. But seek the Lord that that wisdom may manifest in your deeds, in your life. Because time is almost no more. I know it doesn't look like it. It looks like for a lot of people, you know, things are returning back to normal. Did you see the world? They're saying we don't have a problem. We're doing good now. We don't have a problem. That's precisely when you worry. You don't have, you have nothing to worry when everybody's saying, oh, something bad is going to happen. You can sit back and relax if the world were to ever say that. But when they say, oh, nothing is happening. We're getting back to normal. You better, you better sit up straight. Take notice. Because if the world agrees with something, they're going to agree with the voice of a deceiver. They will not agree with the living God. You can't, we can't follow their pattern. Too many people do. They do too many people do. In the days ahead, you guys are going to learn how people just love. You know what? Listen, in Israel, I know they have a somewhat of a, a left, left side government now. Right? Do you guys know it's already under threat? Listen, that is God's territory. There's, there are certain things he just will not tolerate till the end of time. He won't do it. That's his land. Remember the book of Joel. It says he will look down, remember his land, and pity the people. That's just not your ordinary land, Right? It's not. But now that they're putting out truth, this is going to turn into a very interesting world. Do you guys know the truth they say about dinosaurs here lately? How half of them never existed. How they, they finally admitted they messed up on the time that dinosaurs were alive. A lot closer to the time now than we ever thought possible. But the age of the earth couldn't be as old as people once thought it was. How Darwinism. If you didn't believe in Darwinism, you could not get paid for research. So everybody's finding supported Darwinism because they wanted that money. And a distribution of more funds. Or well, it's going to happen. But it, it's going to happen in a very different way with Zero consequences by way of money, but other countries are going to start showing up on our doorstep. And at China right now, China's armed to the teeth. They are. They are. And America bluffs in a lot of ways. Everybody bluffs. Be mindful of that. Everybody bluffs. Everybody will bluff their enemy. Say they have things they don't. They're going to bluff them. But we have a third element working among us. The spiritual realm is going to be made known to just about all of us. You'll see this when the new moons approach. What do you, guys, side note, what do you think people are going to do when they look up in the sky and see a different moon, see another moon? What will happen? 
a whole nother celestial body sitting out there, parked right outside of Earth. What do you think they'll do? It'll be brown and gray with a hint of blue in it. But what do you think people will do? I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to say it's it's a uh, it, Project Bluebeam, you know, that made-up counterintelligence program to hide some very real technology. It's going to be that. And, oh, somebody mentioned fossils. By the way, what causes a fossil? Anybody know? There's only one thing that can cause a fossil because they've only found it in one way. Anybody know what that is? I'll tell you, lots of pressure under dirt. Lots of pressure under dirt. That's what causes a fossil. That's why you don't see modern-day animals fossilized. You don't see them because they're not preserved in the earth. Their bones decay. What stops the decay of bones? You have to keep the insects away, don't you? You have to keep bacteria away. How do you do that? You compress them under soil and then that under water. You have to have lifeless conditions to have fossils. What does that sound like? It sounds like the flood. And don't believe these books saying, well, everybody had the flood story. No, they didn't. Everybody did not. There was one major flood, and there were minor floods, as we have today, all over the earth. Look at Indonesia. You remember when they had that tsunami? They were underwater also. Weren't they? But the Bible teaches us about the ancients, a time before times. That's why in Genesis it says the earth was void and formless and cloaked in darkness. And then when you start to look at those words in the Hebrew, you find out that the earth was in chaos. It was here, but it was in chaos. It was in chaos. It was ruled by something else. That's what the first Americans found out when they came over here. Something else was here on this land, something the Indians had a pact with, something they purposely broke. That's why soldiers today are being warned, do not engage certain things. Isn't that funny? I know somebody has a question. I'm rambling, aren't I? Let me stop rambling. I'm going to bore you guys to pieces. You're going to start talking about other things. Can't you see it's a bit of urgency in the truth of us, right? Listen, and if I can grow, you guys can grow too. I know you can grow, but I've seen you guys grow. I saw your starting character right here at COT. You'd curse me out and kept coming back. You're so different now. In fact, you're near the folks I could see. That the Lord allowed me to see, which is why I never did give up on you. Even to those who can't enter into the chat room, I haven't given up on you. I'll never do that. I'm not your enemy. I'll never do that. I'm not your enemy. Whether you believe it or not, I'm your brother and sister in Christ. I'm not against you. I just couldn't suffer the turmoil. I couldn't allow certain things to go on here. That's all. That's all. That's it. And hopefully, when you guys come back, when a great many come back, they'll be different. They'll be very, very different. Because we're growing here, right? Somebody says, I saw a red and blue star when I lived on a slope. Mount Whitney in 2010, 11 government did what? Are you talking about the red and blue kachina? Well, actually, do you guys know what the red and blue kachina are? How many have Hopi ancestry? How many do? How many have Hopi ancestry in their blood? Nobody else, just Hopi, because that's where it comes from. And it comes from a set of stones. Stones that men have no ability to carve. We're not talking about something on the side of a mountain. We're not talking about the replication of something that people point to. No, we're talking about the circled stones. There are four circled stones. There really are, but they're not stones at all. It's more like transparent uh, granite. 
That's impossible. You can't have transparent granite. That's ridiculous. But it exists. It's very heavy. That's where it exists. Uh, let's see. The character's name was Kahana. Sound for me? Anybody? Yeah, that means I knew all about the Hopi. Intimately. For a reason. Right? The red and the blue Kachina. They are stars. But stars are not stars you see in the sky. They're not. Which is why they said, if a specific star comes from the east, it means one thing. And if it comes from the west, it means something else. And it's so funny because back in the, back in the, um, uh, back in the 30s, the Hopis talked about today's society. You know that? They talked about the moon. They talked about men going to the moon. They said, don't bring back the moon rocks. They got together and they talked to the U.N. The U.N. laughed them out of the building. They came back and they weren't laughing because certain things had happened. They told everybody what, the, what America would look like in this modern day time. They talked about the Internet and everything else. They said it would be covered in webs. They talked about men speaking and speaking stones, much like, much like the story that's found overseas near the U.K. Hmm. But the components are all mixed up and misinterpreted, which is why the Hopi don't discuss it. But they have a problem, too. There was a bit of deception going on with them. Because if you notice, their kingdoms fell. Everybody's kingdoms fell. All the Native Americans' kingdoms fell. Do you know why? They were worshiping those who would come to speak to them. Why would you worship a serpent? Something that looks like a crocodile, right? And a bodybuilder. And they, with a flat face, why would you worship something like that? Why do all humans have so much DNA from lizards? Why is our DNA so, so, so um, um, naturally compared to lizards? I'll tell you why, but I won't get into it, and I'll change subjects. You ready? Why is it that mankind catches all the diseases on Earth? Why don't the animals catch it? Why is it that animals can go out and just live just fine with all the conditions, but we suffer to find clothing and everything else, simply to walk outside? It's almost like we're not, we're not really made from the earth we're not perfectly bound to the earth you can find the answer in genesis you're in this world not of this world you are not naturally immune to everything in this life by way of generations and immunity has built up the animals do just fine. We're the ones who have to make things so we can continue to live here. We don't adapt to the earth so well, do we? I should give everybody a hint, but it's not some evolution. It's not Darwinism. It's creation. We were clearly engineered. Even our genes have on and off switches. They found out about some tried to turn them off and they turn themselves back. Uh, uh, they tried to turn them on and they turn themselves back off again at specific intervals. Every three days, your body attempts to repair itself. That is so funny when Jesus rose on the third day. And so now every three days, your body seeks to prepare itself. You know what happens on the seventh day? That's two repair moments per week. But on the seventh day, which is actually Saturday, haven't you guys noticed? How do you feel on Saturday versus Sunday? I'm gonna just tell you the truth. How do you feel on Saturday? Most people get around on Saturday. And you know what they wanna do on Saturday? They wanna have a good time, don't they? Don't they? You're not thinking about work on Saturday, are you? It, now, we're not talking about Sunday. We're talking about Saturday. On Saturday, 
Most of you want to have a good time. Most of you begin to celebrate each other on Saturday, and you also do something else. That happens to be the day when your body wants to relax the most. Not Sunday. On Sunday, people are scrambling for church. On Sunday, people are scrambling to make dinner. On Sunday, people are scrambling to tie up loose ends and get ready for Monday. On Sunday, you're thinking about Monday because Sunday is actually the first day of the week. Saturday is actually the Sabbath day that was changed by the Catholic Church a long time ago. Who said with the, they said that because they were endowed to be Christ on earth in the absence of the Lord, that they had the power to change the day of worship. You don't believe me? Go look it up. Go find the apologetic letter that goes with the edict. Go find it. They changed it because they said they had a right to. That's what pontiffs are for. That's what their little uh, hidden names mean, right? They're in the place of Christ on the earth. That's why they take it upon themselves to forgive sins. They can't forgive sins. Only Christ can forgive sins. Because nobody else is going to give their life for you. And even if they did, it's not going to work to make it to have your sins be forgiven. You can forget that. Because they had flaws to them. And by the way, there are no more sacrifices. Which is why the abominations are about to begin in the Middle East. And then the true ruckus begins. <sighs> okay, let me slow down. Somebody says slow down. All right. So anyway, let me not ramble. But we get to this time that we live in right now. And we have to be careful to maintain our walk in faith. I mean, be ever so careful. You can't lose your footing now. How many of you feel like you're not making headway? Like It's almost like you're in limbo. You know you have that feeling. You're in limbo. But you're hungry. For some information that's not present yet. You've been searching all over the place to try and find it. <laughs> You're in combat. You don't even know it. You're being touched by something that should never touch you. Or never have power to influence you. Right? Remember, darkness has to get you to agree with it. To have power over you. It cannot have power over you. Somebody says, well, what if God does me like Job? He already said he would not. That's why he did that with Job. He's not going to do it with you because he said he would not do it. What about the suffering that happens in Revelation with all these people who didn't believe in God? You only see suffering after a given time. You don't see suffering before the vials are poured out. No, what you see is justice. They're setting that up pretty quick. Overseas is about to turn into a... Well, you'll witness it. we talked about this before. Everything changes. Everything changes. I you know, the, even the conversation uh, that took place last week regarding... Benjamin Netanyahu not, not, not being there anymore, right? That prospect was entertained, but it was only a matter of time before that happened, and then they fell apart because the Bible's very clear. If they think certain things are going to work, it's not. Because the Lord's going to have, he has set his ways, and everything he said will come to pass, period. Hmm? Everything in this world is designed to make you be a breaker of the commandments. You guys know that? From uh, the change in the dates to try and trick you into worshiping God on the wrong day. But that's not going to work. It's not going to work. You know why it doesn't work? Do you, do you guys know why that will never work? If you worship the Lord on Sunday, but the Sabbath is really Saturday... Why is that not going to be counted against you? And I boldly say this. Why is it not going to be counted against you? 
Because by all rights, to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy is a blunt statement. But why is that not going to be against you? There you go, Kay. Kay said, because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. What else does the Bible say about that? Something that the prophets could not do, we can do. Something they wished they could do, right? They wanted to look upon those who could do it, but they could not do it. Something that we can do, only we can do it. They could not do it. What is it? Anybody know? Does anybody know what we can do that those of the Old Testament cannot do? We can do it right now. Many of you may not have done it so far, but you can do it. Does anybody know what that is? Now, remember, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. You're washed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. So the Sabbath is right there with you. Consequently, there is no hiding place outside of God's appointed day for us anymore. But here's the other thing. They could not enter into the rest of the Lord. Do you know what that is? That doesn't mean you enter into the Lord and go to sleep. That's not what it means. It's called a place of rest for a reason. It matches the day when God rested. We can enter into that same rest when he ceased it from his labors. The Bible says this. One who enters into the rest, to, to the rest of Christ, right? To that rest in Jesus has ceased from his own labors. But why have they ceased from their own labors? It's, a, it's not just any labor. They're very specific labors. What does man labor to do? They try and labor to do everything Jesus has already accomplished. He's already accomplished so much that's just like a teacher. How many of you think you need somebody to teach you about the Word of God? Now be careful on this one now, because Jesus spoke and he did not lie, did he? How many of you believe you need someone to teach you about the Word of God? When I'm speaking to you about the Word of God, do you know what you're doing? You've heard what I've said before. But you're looking into my character, because you know me, you have known me over time, right? Right? There's something in my voice, my presentation, something that attracts something in you, enough to have you hear. But now that you listened over and over and over again, you have learned a portion of my character. And a belief steps in, but I don't believe he's lying to us. All right? So what am I doing? I'm supporting the job of the Holy Spirit in your life. Jesus said he would teach you. Jesus said he would make known to you all things. Oh my, all, not some things, all things. Do you know why people, people are so reluctant, right? They're so reluctant to utilize what God has already put in them. God has put in you the entire word of God. The only thing that confuses you is when you want to do something else. See, what I'm reading, and I, but I don't want a specific uh, portion to be true is because I'm doing something else I shouldn't be doing. But the Lord already knew that. While you're in this world and in this flesh, you're going to have things that you will not overcome. You can't overcome them. Some of you cannot overcome certain things in your life. Why? Because the Lord already said he would overcome them for you. Now, if you overcame them, that would make void the word of Christ, wouldn't it? So at the day that he calls you forth, he will have overcome everything in your life. He will have made you a victor in himself. He will have fulfilled his word. That's why the Bible says a redeemer cometh. Your redemption draweth nigh. It never said your redemption was complete. It never said that because you're not fully redeemed until you stand with the Lord. You're not fully redeemed. You're in the middle of a process. You have a chance to be a child of the living God, but your process is incomplete. And anybody who thinks they have made it is in grave error because the people who have made it are no longer here. 
Until you finish your race, your process is not over. There's something for you to do. And that whole process is called redemption. That's when you shed the remnants of this flesh. You'll step into another body prepared for you. A body without the limitations that this one has. It could be a body that looks similar to this body. For some of you, it could be. But the Bible is clear. It is not known yet what we shall be, but we know we shall be like him. Well, when Jesus came back, they did not recognize him. They didn't. They didn't know who he was. In fact, he was transfigured. And they had an issue. He was standing on the waters, and they had an issue. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm? That means you've been armed and equipped. But it's time to wake up. See, the call is going out, isn't it? The call is going out to get up, to wake up. He's coming, get up, wake up. We're not talking about the call that went out 100 years ago either. We're talking about a different call. This call is causing people to get up and to make decisions because they're seeing the world collapse before their eyes. See, we've hit a time where we're able to enjoy things together. By way of media, we are locked one to another. We're afraid to lose that, aren't we? But the Lord made it so. He permits it to function on a day-to-day -day basis for his purpose, for his own glory. If, if Jesus does not want something happening, he'll simply not allow it to happen. Why? He's become the head of all principalities. He's the head of all powers. He's the head of all things. They need permission to continue to operate in all elements of existence. They have their role in your life. Everything that's happening in your life is for your victory, not for your destruction. It's not what it's for. It's for your victory. For those of you who are found consistent and faithful, you're to be an example to everybody else. You're also to have much more. And as evil rises, so will the Holy Spirit rise within you. Many of you will have a victory, a type of victory that you will not understand. It will cause you to cry because the Lord will give to you. He'll grant to you strength and power in this earth. It's not for everybody to have that strength and same type of power. But the Holy Spirit's going to rise in all of us because it is the job of the Holy Spirit Right? As a mediator between us and the heavenly realm. And the Holy Spirit is sent in the name of who? Jesus, who is our sacrifice. Because we still have sin in our lives. He is our, our sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, the last sacrifice, a worthy sacrifice. Through repentance, you are clean of everything you ever did.